Hey guys, this is Kenjiro and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today I'm going to be showing how we can take this photo of these two folks and remove the woman from the picture and make it seem like there's an empty chair left in its place. Now this is going to be a commentary video, so it's not quite a tutorial where I'm explaining every single step. Um, it's actually going to be a sped up video of the whole process of what I was doing. Um, but essentially there's really only two main techniques that are being employed for doing something like this. And those two are selection copy and using the clone tool. And so what's going to follow is just showing how by using these two techniques in a lot of different ways and, you know, kind of chasing it with a little bit of blending and whatnot, we can get this full effect of fully removing uh, an individual from a scene like this. Now, before we actually jump into the full process, though, I do want to mention once again, as usual, about image selection. So in this particular case, this image is going to work out really well for selection copy and primarily because in the process of trying to re remove the woman from the left side, there's a lot of elements from the rest of the image that we can pull from, hence the selection copy. So we're going to be taking parts of uh, the chair that the man is sitting in and parts of the rug and parts of the wooden paneling, all these things, and we're going to be using it in different instances on the chair where the woman is at so that we can essentially erase her from the scene. If you have a scene that doesn't have as many elements that you can reuse, it'll either be much more difficult or you'll just have to do a lot more cloning instead. So let's get to it. So as we're getting started here, really what I'm just doing is creating three regions of editing. There's sort of like the very, very background, which I'm gonna manipulate, and the chair itself. Uh, so in this early stage here, what you see is I'm working on that background grouping. And that's mostly just trying to get like the wall all cleaned up, the wood paneling all cleaned up, pretty much any region where the woman is extending beyond the chair, we're going to want to have a perfect background underneath so that when we get to the chair, we can just erase those extra pieces and something meaningful will show through. And so on this wood paneling, you'll see that's the first example of the selection copy. I'm just taking other portions of the wood paneling, copying it and pasting it, and then kind of using the eraser to blend it in. Next, we move on to the carpet. Same thing, copy, selection. In this case, you're gonna have to just kind of, you know, see, adjust things. Maybe oftentimes, and since there's a, there's a geometry to the carpet pattern, uh, using the sheer adjustment on the corners with the pick tool. But as you can see, I'm just like, you know, testing and trying out experimenting with different areas of the rug to see what's going to work better, performing manipulations on it. If it's not quite working, you can always just remove it, try a different area. Or if it's something that is working out really well, you just as well can even make a copy of the copy and then once again, just use the sheer adjustment to make the geometry match. And if necessary, you can always use the eraser with some type of like low hardness to get it to blend with the rest of the scene. As we're working through the shadows right under the, or we're working through the carpet right under the chair, you can see the shadows are getting a little wonky, but um, once we add all the elements back in, we'll work on the shadows to get it back, uh, to become more cohesive again. So now we're gonna move to the wood paneling region, which is uh, just under the chair. And in this case, I'm just using the clone tool. There's not quite enough reference of the wood panel to do the selection copy, so. I'm just using a pretty small clone brush coming at that little shadow line from both sides just to make it a little less dramatic. Not too worried about it in fine detail though because it's a pretty small portion of the image. So now that we've kind of taken care of that background grouping, we're gonna move to the chair grouping. And what you can see, I've just made a copy and am starting to try to isolate the chair. 
using the background eraser uh, and the regular eraser as well as some selection. So now that this chair layer is hovering above our layer from underneath that we've cleaned up and, and made appropriately, it's going to be a lot easier for us to remove elements that are extending beyond the chair. And you can see once again did a selection copy from the man's chair and then just inverted it and then we can use that as the left side of the woman's chair. And now very simply just erasing anything beyond the chair will allow our prepared background to come through. Next another selection copy for the front bottom edge of the chair. It's going to bring his leg into the scene but we'll take care of that in a second. Using just a regular eraser to kind of blend this chair's pattern into the woman's chair. And to get rid of the man's leg, we can simply just make a copy of that and kind of, you know, reorient it. And then just as long as those legs aren't overlapping at any point, now we have a situation where we've gotten rid of all the legs on the woman's chair. So now that we're needing to take care of the body portion of the chair, doing yet another selection copy, but this time grabbing the largest portion possible from the left side of the chair and then just pasting it multiple times to cover that whole region. Applying some rotation just to give it some variance. We want to try to avoid repeating patterns uh, and then sampling from the right side as well just so that there's a little bit more consistency as that pattern blends to the right side of the chair. So flattened all of those squares onto a single layer just because it makes it a little bit easier to use the clone tool to uh, kind of erase all of those fine distinct lines between all those squares. Usually a low opacity, low hardness brush works pretty well here. Now to give the right side, the right arm rest a little bit more definition, we can just copy selection from the right side of the man's chair and then just keep the parts that we feel like are helpful. So next to kind of finish off that back panel of the chair, we'll take like that bottom portion of the pattern and create a new layer and drop it behind. And then just kind of erase to blend that pattern back in, trying to pervert, preserve some manner of the shadows so that there still is some kind of depth to it. Spending a real quick amount of time trying to clean up the buttons a little bit, but ultimately didn't spend too much time there because it didn't seem like it would be that beneficial. So then cleaning up that bottom edge on the seat as well as some of the shadows, just using the cloning tool. And then now focusing on trying to remove these little dark spots that were created by the man's leg. And just using the cloning tool, and, and I think the trick here to try to prevent the, the notorious clone pattern is to just sample from many different places when you're using the clone tool over these patterns. So now moving on to the chair leg, uh, once again, copy selection from the right side to uh, bring the missing leg into the scene on the left chair. Once again, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the shadows uh, right at the end. So now moving on to just sort of that wood framing that kind of holds the legs together. We're going to clean up uh, just some of that edging under there, but once again, copy selection using the same chair, but just inverting it and then repositioning it for the other leg. So now for the most part, since the chair is complete, we're going to focus on uh, just just giving a little bit more volume to the shadow at the bottom, not not trying to focus too much on geometry because there are a lot of lights in this scene. So the shadow could get a little bit complex. 
but just trying to fill that empty space. And, and primarily the technique here is just having two layers. One that's just straight painting in a low opacity in a dark gray, and then duplicating that layer uh, as a burn and keeping that opacity uh, a little bit lower. And so that's basically it. As you can tell, you know, it, it, it did, uh, just using those two techniques, really allowed us to you know completely remove any trace of the woman uh, and kind of leave us with this empty looking chair uh, there's definitely still some other things that could be done to make the chair uh, more realistic like um, either removing some of those buttons that are there um, or duplicating them and moving them around so that it seems like there's actually a pattern there um, the lighting could be improved in some spots as well just to give it a little bit more fidelity but just off the cuff, I think it, it you know, it, because we use so much existing reference, uh, it's convincing enough. And really, uh, I think in a situation like this, you probably wouldn't just end up with an empty chair. You would probably end up putting just something else, uh, a different subject perhaps, if you wanted to, to kind of fill in the space. One example that I thought would be fun would be to reintroduce the woman back into the scene, but uh, apply the invisibility effect that I covered in a different one of my videos. So now you can kind of see how, um, you know, still benefit from her being removed from the chair. But if you knew, for example, that you were going to do something like this, obviously you wouldn't have to remove her, um, her as com comprehensively as we did. Um, but if you were introducing a whole different subject, uh, it would just give you a lot more flexibility. And that's about it for this one. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new videos that I post, click the subscribe button and you can check the video description for ways to support and engage the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.